Hey, I trust all is well. I'm Brandon Anthony Clark, and today I got something very special I want to share with you. Today, I'm going to show you how to transform your savings and your expenses into tax-free wealth that you can use for anything you want without having to pay penalties, management fees, and most importantly, without having to save any extra money. Now, I didn't say you didn't have to save any money. You just don't have to save any extra money. And I know that sounds way too good to be true. Stick around because that's exactly what I'm going to show you how to do. So today we're going to do a deep dive into the world of Index Universal Life or IUL. You may have heard people say things like max funded IUL or properly structured IUL and a ton of different other terms like that. But what does that even mean in English? What does it look like? I'm going to show you what a basic IUL looks like. And I'm talking nine times out of ten when an IUL is set up. It's usually set up like this. After that, I'm going to show you what a max funded IUL is going to look like. And then just for a little bit of extra icing on top of the cake, I'm going to show you how to max fund an IUL in three years. Now, just because you can max fund an IUL in three years doesn't mean you necessarily want to max fund an IUL in three years. Why is that? This is like anything else. The more you put in, the more you'll get out. Now, full transparency, what I'm going to show you today isn't the exact flip system. This is just the foundation or the base so that once we get to the next step, you won't be starting from scratch. And let me be clear, it's very important that both insurance professionals and consumers are well informed because if this isn't done right, then there is a good chance that you could lose money and nobody wants to lose money, right? So I'm here to make sure you have the right information so that you can make the best decision for you and your family. So I hope you guys are excited as I am. Let's go ahead and hop into it. All right, so what you're looking at is called a life insurance illustration. And what an illustration does is it gives us an idea of what a policy could look like based on all the money we pay into it, all the money we borrow out of it, all of the fees, all of the interest, basically everything. Now, it's not an actual guarantee like this is exactly what you're going to have, but at least it gives you an idea or, or a peek into the future to give you an idea of what you're going to have. All right. Now, these are all based on historical averages based on real data. Now, in any life insurance policy, you're going to have an issue age. I actually just made this for myself just to give you guys an example. I get a question a lot of times that says, Brandon, you know what? Maybe I want to get a policy on my daughter or my son because they're younger and they might get a better rating than me, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Those are all good reasons, but I want you to understand when you're designing a policy for maximum cash value, your age and your health matter, but they don't matter as much as you think they're going to matter. All right. Now, the next section here where you'll see non-tobacco, what that tells you is the health rating. So as we know, the actual death benefit of the policy or the specified amount or face amount, which we can see here, that 500,000, that's based on your age, it's based on your health, all right? So my age is 37, and I just ran this at a standard rate. You can get a better than a standard rating, all right? Typically, your rate classes will go preferred plus, which is the absolute best. You have preferred, which is like, right below that. Then you'll have select, which is like right below preferred. And then you'll have standard, which is where most of everybody falls. All right. And then below your standard, you have your substandard. We'll talk about that on the different conversation. But as you can see, this policy is designed at a $500,000 face amount. And we're using an option A death benefit. Now, nine times out of 10, when you see a life insurance policy that is designed for option A, it's not designed for the traditional max cash accumulation. But if we're looking at using this policy to transform our savings and expenses into tax-free wealth that we can use for anything we want, then we will want an option A level death benefit. That's because we don't want our costs to increase as we're leveraging money through it. A lot of times if you go on like YouTube or talk with any other insurance professionals, they'll always say option B or two, which is increasing. And I feel like I'm getting super technical on you guys, but I think if you're watching this video, you can handle it. Okay. But in this example, we're going to look at option A. All right. For level. But in most scenarios, you're going to have an option B increasing death benefit. But in the flip system, we're going to have an option A. And for any insurance professionals who are watching who want to actually know exactly, well, why do you use option A instead of option B? I've been taught my whole career to use option B to get the most cash. Well, that is going to be a conversation we can have on a one on one. So I look forward to talking with you. All right. The next thing that we're going to look at is the monthly premium. Now, a lot of times people ask, well, 
Brandon, how much is my premium going to be? And your premium can be any number. It really depends on what you want it to be. When you're designing a policy for maximum cash accumulation, you want to pick a number that you can save without even thinking about it. Whether it's 100 a month, whether it's 1,000 a month, whether it's 2,000 a month, whatever number you can save without thinking about it, that's the number that you should build your base on or start with. All right. And if you can do more, do more later, but get comfortable first. Now, the next thing we're going to look at is right over here where you see premium outlay. So premium outlay just tells us how much premium goes in each year. And so you can see that at the end of year one, age 38, we would have put a total of $12,000 into this policy as premium. So that's $1,000 a month over 12 months. That equals $12,000. Does that make sense? Now, the very next column is going to represent money that we take out whether it's a loan or whether it's a withdrawal. The next column is just going to represent the difference. So it's basically what came in as premium minus what came out as a loan equals the difference. So 12,000 minus zero equals 12,000. That's our outlay for the year. Does that make sense? Now, the insurance company gives us three different ways to look at this. They're going to give us the worst case scenario. And that's what you're looking at from here to here. So if you've done any research at all on an IUL, you know that you'll have a cap rate. Typically that cap rate will be about 10%. You'll also have a floor rate, which is 0%. And then you'll earn anywhere between the middle of zero and whatever the cap is. So the saying is zero is your hero because you can never get worse than zero, right? This is what I call the World War III doomsday terminator end of the world scenario. What this example tells us is the IUL getting 0% basically every single month of every single year from now until the end of time. This also shows us the maximum mortality charges. And so what this means is let's say that for whatever reason, the insurance company has to charge you way more than normal for your insurance coverage. This is something that they would even have to go to the State Department of Insurance to even justify why they would even have to do something like this. The insurance industry is over 100 years old and this has never happened. Never happened. Not saying that it can't happen, but the likelihood of it happening is not all that high, if you ask me. But the insurance company shows worst case scenario because this is a contract. This is a guarantee. How many accounts do you have today that can grow money that have a guarantee? If you don't have one, that might be something you could consider. All right. Now, the next section from here to here, this is what we would call our alternate scale or non guaranteed policy values illustrated at 3.9%. Okay. So, in a lot of my videos, you guys hear me say, all right, your money goes in a policy, you could earn 7%. I say 7% because I've seen the real numbers and I've had a policy long enough to know exactly what it returns. But let's say we don't get 7%. What if we only average? 3.9%. What that column shows us is this policy earning 3.9% every single year moving forward. What's really cool about index universal life insurance policies that I don't think a lot of people are aware of is you could actually have fixed interest crediting. Because one of the things that I hear sometimes is that, well, what if you get zero in multiple years? Well, that's also never happened. However, if we are feeling a little bit concerned about where the market is, Right. If we feel like we're going to be in a recession and we don't want to have index crediting, then we can opt for the guaranteed fixed crediting. And currently the guaranteed account of this particular insurance carrier is paying 3.9 percent. All right. So that's our alternate scale. Now, the next thing we're going to look at is this last section, which is from here to here. This section is going to show us a 5.64 percent return. So this is more of a conservative projection in line with the actual credit rates and the historical numbers, et cetera. Now, with inside of this little section here, you're going to see your death benefit, you're going to see your net account value, and you're going to see your cash surrender value. Death benefit, we already know what that is, right? We already covered that up here. The net account value shows you how much money you have in your policy, minus all your fees, all right? So that's, the, that's why it says net account value. So in other words, Let's say we put in $12,000 for the year minus our fees. The net account value, we got $9,502. The cash surrender value, which is right to the right here, it shows zero. 
So when it shows zero, that means we can't borrow any money from this particular policy. It means that of this $9,500 of our account value, we can't access any of it. This is what we would call really just a basic IUL, just out of the box, maybe an inexperienced financial professional or insurance agent put this together because they just didn't know how to, they didn't know what buttons to press. This is not a max funded IUL by any stretch of the means. Whether it's properly structured or not, that depends on what the objective is. If the objective for this particular policy is max cash accumulation, max cash growth, then it's definitely not properly structured. Okay. Now, the argument for most insurance products, actually all insurance products, is that this isn't a short term asset class that you would want to put money into. This is more like real estate. This is the long term. This is that long money, right? This ain't popcorn money. It's that slow cooked ribs, you know, that slow cooked brisket type money. You <laughs> feel me? going to take some time because if we have this policy for 10 years and we've been paying a thousand dollars a month over that whole time, then we would have $120,000 in total premium money out of pocket paid towards the premium. Now, when we go look at our net account value, how much money do we have? We got $123,604 of that. How much can we access? We can access $122,434, right? So basically all of the money that we paid in premiums, we have access to plus an extra $2,000. So what does that mean? Or why is that important? Remember I said earlier that this column and these columns include all of the fees that we pay for the insurance policy itself, all of the fees for that $500,000 death benefit, right? So if we've been paying this $12,000 over the last 10 years, how much is this insurance policy really costing us? All right. Well, some people could look at that and say, well, it's not really costing us anything because I got more money in cash value than I actually put into this thing, which means I'm, I have a profitable asset. This asset has made you money. Does that make sense? Now, again, this isn't for just the short term because this is long term money. We want to generate some income out of this thing, tax free income that we can use for anything that we want. So we're going to go down to year 20. So at the end of year 20, we would have paid a total of $240,000 worth of premium into the policy. Now let's look at how much cash value we got. We got $369,387 of cash value in the policy. And our death benefit has also increased. You see the thing with the cash value life insurance policy, the death benefit will always increase. It'll always increase because you can never have more cash value then what you have is death benefit. So if your cash value starts growing too fast, then your death benefit has to automatically increase in order to comply with the tax regulations to keep all of this cash in this policy tax free. Right? We want tax free money, not taxable money. Now, we're going to keep moving forward because this is more of a 30 year traditional retirement account or retirement plan setup. And again, this is your standard basic IUL design and there's nothing wrong with this but we want to show you how to maximize it. Now, at the end of 30 years, that would be a total of $360,000 of premium paid. The cash value in this policy at this point is over $800,000. The death benefit at this point is a little over $1.1 million. So you would have put in this over 30 years and you would have this $1.1 million of tax-free death benefit and living benefit if you were ever sick, disabled, or terminally ill and over $800,000 in tax-free cash that you could use however you please. Now, you could spend this money all at once or you can treat it more like a retirement account. And if we use it more as a retirement account, then I want you to notice here, remember, this is the column that says money out. This is money coming out. Well, every year, look what's coming out. $50,000 every year tax-free from age 68 all the way through age 95. And I'm going to pause here at age 95. So assuming you live to age 95, you would have put in a total of $360,000 of your money into the policy. You would have taken out as income $1.4 million from the policy, and you would still leave behind almost $200,000 of a tax-free death benefit, which will go down to your children or your children's children, or maybe even your children's children's children. You never know, right? So let's just say if a 
insurance professional sat down with someone and showed them this, I think anybody in their right mind would be pretty excited about this, especially when they only put in about $360,000 and are able to get all this back. There isn't another asset class on the planet that will do this. And again, this is just a basic IUL. This ain't even max funded yet. That's powerful. But it's not the best. And I want you to have the best because you deserve the best. Okay. So now we're going to look at a max funded IUL. But before we look at the max funded IUL, there's going to be some things that you want to remember. The first thing you want to remember is the specified amount or the death benefit. In this example, it's $500,000. The other thing that you want to remember is the premium. Premium is $1,000. Okay. Also, the other two things you'll want to remember is the cash surrender value and the net account value. All right. Now we're ready. All right. So as you're looking at this, what are the two main things that stand out? Well, number one, the death benefit. The death benefit in this example is only $182,848. Whereas in the previous example, it was a half a million dollars. Why is that important? Well, it's important because the more death benefit, the more fees, the more money out of our pocket, the less that goes into the cash value of the policy. The lower the fees, the less money out of our pocket, the more money goes into the cash value. All right. So in this example, look, the premium is still the same at $1,000 a month, but we bought the minimum required insurance amount of $182,848. Now, this amount is going to be different for everyone because the minimum required insurance amount is based on your age, is based on your health, and it's based on your sex. So unless you're 37 years old and you're standard and it's with this particular company, then your death benefit, your specified amount could actually be a different number for the same premium. Because these are all based off ratios and formulas that the insurance company, they basically calculate these things. All right. But here's what I want you to understand. The way this policy is designed is that it can take no more than a thousand dollars of premium a year. So what does that mean? It means that we can pay less than a thousand. We just can't pay more than a thousand because that death benefit sets the maximum amount that you can contribute into the policy. That's max funding. If you see a death benefit like this, there's a good chance your policy is structured in a max funded way. Okay. Especially if your premiums here. Side note, the younger you are, the higher the death benefit requirement. The older you are, the lower the death benefit requirement. What does that mean? Well, let's just say, for example, that I wanted to get the same policy on my two year old daughter and I wanted to put in a thousand dollars a month. Her minimum required death benefit might be a million dollars. Why? That's just what the IRS says, right? Remember all the money in this policy will grow tax deferred and we can access it tax free as long as we follow the IRS guidelines. And so to piggyback on what I said a little bit earlier, when I said, well, your age and your health matter, but they don't matter as much as you think they matter if you're looking at a policy for cash accumulation, because your minimum insurance requirement is called minimum non mech That is the actual like term for it, MEC, M-E-C, minimum non mech right? So if you want a max funded cash value insurance policy, you want it to be designed at minimum non mech And so this policy is designed at minimum non mech Now, the good thing is that this is going to be an extremely efficient policy in terms of cost. The only bad thing is that our policy is only designed to take a thousand dollars a year max. So if you wanted to put in more money, you couldn't put in any more money. Um, without making a couple alterations. And those are some things that we could talk about on a one-on-one. -on -one. All right. Now, again, what are some other things that we recognize as we work our way down? Let's look at this cash value and the net account value. So you see in this example, there's over $10,000 of cash surrender value available in the first year. I'm going to just pop back over to the previous example so we can compare. So we see in the previous example, same premium, same policy, different death benefit. In this example, there's no money available in year one. In the max funded IUL, look how much of money is available in year one. There's $10,000 of the $12,000 of premium that was paid. That's powerful. So what does it mean? It means that if this person paid $12,000 of premium within the year, they could borrow against that amount. 
they could borrow $10,644 from their policy if they wanted to. All right. Now we're going to fast forward down to the 10 year mark. So if you remember in the previous example, 10 years in, we only had about $122,000. In this example, we got $140,000. That's all. That's $18,000 more in this design. Why? Because we reduced the death benefit down. This policy is very efficient. This policy is outpacing the growth of the same product with the same money, right? And this is why I say, man, you can have the same product, same company, same everything and get two completely different results. This is what I'm talking about. This is the same policy, the same product, two completely different results. It's just something to think about. Now, I want to go ahead and fast forward down to the 20 year mark. At this point, we got two hundred and forty thousand of premium in the policy. And we can see that the cash value has grown to three hundred and ninety seven thousand. That's all money ready to use at any point in time for any reason. If we go out to the 30 year mark, we can see that what we got eight hundred and fifty one thousand of cash value available and one point two million dollars of tax free death benefit and living benefit. Now, I just think it's kind of cool how as the older we get, the more we would need the protection, the more value we get in the policy. Because remember, as that cash value grows, the death benefit has to grow. You can never have more cash value than what you have as death benefit. And if you remember in this example, we started off with how much death benefit? $182,848. Now we got how much cash value? We got like seven, eight times that amount, right? So the death benefit has to increase. Now, at this point, we're going to treat this more like a retirement account, and we're not going to pay any premium into this policy. Now this policy is going to pay us $53,108 every single year from age 68 all the way through age 95, right? So if you remember in the previous example, how much money were we taking out? Don't worry, I'm going to pull it right back up for you. In this example, we were only taking out 50000 In the new example, we're taking out 53000 So that might not seem like a lot if we only look at one year because it's only $3,000 more, but I don't know about you, but if... I had the opportunity to get $3,000 more than what I could have had, then I would for sure want that because $3,000 a year over 25 years, that's an extra $75,000, $80,000 of income that we could have gotten that we didn't get because we weren't max funding our IUL or we thought we were max funding an IUL because it was just never broken down and relayed to us in a way that we could understand it. You see what I'm saying? So this is powerful. So again, the same $360,000 went in as premium. We got about $1.5 million out as tax-free income. And then we still leave behind a little bit over $200,000 as a tax-free death benefit to our children, grandchildren, or great-grandchildren. That's powerful, you guys. Extremely powerful. But we're not done yet because I always get asked this question. Well, Brandon, what happens if I can no longer pay a premium into my policy what happens if I lose my job, this, that, and the other? Basically, what happens if I can't pay my premium? Well, what if there was a way you could max out your policy in only three years? Now it becomes extremely easy, right? Because if somebody told me, man, you know what, Brandon, you're gonna have to pay this thousand dollars a month over the next 20 years or the next 30 years, I might look at that and be like, man, maybe I can't make that thousand dollar premium payment. There's so many things that could happen to you in the next 30, 40, 50 years to where maybe you can't make that $1,000 a month premium payment, you know? So if that happens, then what happens with your policy? This is the beautiful thing about max funding a policy because you can do it in three years. Now, you might not be able to plan for 30 or 40 years, but you can plan for the next three. You can definitely say, I make this amount of money. I for sure, without thinking about it, I can save 500 a month or 250 a month or 1000 a month or 1500 a month or 2000 a month whatever the number is it's easier to plan over the next 3 years than it is over the next 30 I'm not saying that we shouldn't plan for the next 30 it's just easier to plan over in 3 year increments so that's what we're going to take a look at we're going to show you the same policy same premium same everything but now we're going to only fund it in 3 years and we're never going to put another dime into this policy and we're going to see what happens so again, we notice very, the same death benefit, same premium, same cash surrender value in the first year. But in this example, we're paying $12,000 in year one, in year two, and in year three. 
After year three, there's no more premiums being paid into this policy for a total of $36,000. But if you notice the cash value at the 10 year mark, we got how much? We got $43,336. We made money and we're not paying the premium and we still have our policy. What about over the next 20 years? What does that look like? We still got our same $36,000 here because we never added any extra money to it. But now we got $68,000 in our cash value. Our money is almost double in this 20 year period. And again, we're looking at conservative numbers. We can look at the real numbers and we can show you what the real numbers look like. But 20 years in, we're at $68,372 projected. All right. What about at the 30 year mark? 30 years into it, we got $116,000 in the cash value. We still got our death benefit here too, right? But I want you to notice how the death benefit isn't increasing in this example. That's because we just put only enough to keep the policy in force without us having to put in premiums for the rest of our life. Now, based on the numbers that I showed you previously, is there any reason why you wouldn't continue paying premiums into this thing or saving premiums into this thing, especially if they can generate income for you in the future and peace of mind, most importantly? Right now, we're going to go out to year 30 or year 40. All right. Now we're at 77. We got about 200,000 in the cash value. Now the death benefit is starting to increase a little bit here. Now, let's say if we get out to age 95, because that's been our year where we've been stopping at. So at age 95, we have basically got 509,000 of cash value on the policy. And there's still $538,296 of tax-free death benefit that will go to your children, your grandchildren, or your great-grandchildren. And all we did was put in $36,000. Now, again, this isn't the flip system, but this is a very important piece to understanding the flip system. The flip system is all about having the right IUL, meaning the right product. It's also about having the right policy design. And we didn't really go really deep in policy design today. We covered like the main things to make sure that you, at least the policy is max funded and you can see, you know, what it looks like to, to see a max funded policy. But we didn't go into the actual details of the flip design and show you how you actually transform not just your savings, which is what we're looking at now, but also your expenses into tax-free wealth that you can use for anything you want. So if you're ready to learn more about the flip system, Go ahead and use the link down below and get access to the virtual courses. The virtual course is going to give you some actual examples of what the flip system looks like, as well as there'll be some other trainings to teach you about revocable trust, irrevocable trust, and business planning, business structuring, especially for my entrepreneurs out there who just started their business, um, who've had a business for a while, and you want to make sure that all your assets are protected from any lawsuits, creditors any judgments and things like that. You don't work super hard to build this business for your family. You want to make sure that you keep it. And you definitely want to make sure that something that you can't control doesn't affect everything that you built. You know what I'm saying? So definitely go ahead, click the link down below. You're going to learn how to transform your savings and expenses and the tax-free wealth that you can use for anything you want without having to pay taxes, penalties, fees, and most importantly, without having to save any extra money. Thank you for your time. Hope to talk to you soon.